Welcome to the Crypt of the Scarab God. I have no clue who said that, but that was pretty spooky. Alright, let's just... Let's jump into the deck deck. We're playing the Scarab God. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X for X is the number of zombies you control. Then for four mana, um, exile target creature card from a graveyard, which includes our opponent or any opponents you're playing against. Uh, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4 4 black zombie. Then, whenever the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If you're playing on Magic Online, make sure you click on the commander so it goes to the graveyard and not back to the command zone. I do that so many times, it's very frustrating, and it'll be frustrating for you too. It's not going to change. <laughs> you're not going to like it. It's just as frustrating as me when I do it. But, alright, so we're playing the Scarab God. What are we doing with the Scarab God? Um, it has this first ability. Each opponent loses X life and you scry X for X is the number of zombies of the battlefield. So, you could definitely go zombies with the Scarab God, but with my, this particular build of the Scarab God, since it has reanimate on a stick, we can get it down, reanimate anything out of anybody's graveyard. I decided to go with the Black Blue Reanimator deck for this, and I'll kind of cover some of our reanimator targets, but basically, there are maybe two to three zombies in here. Outside of that, this is strictly just black blue reanimator. Like I have a Mimeoplasm deck, but it's really kind of um almost Voltron in a way that it's just really big beat sticks really quick. Uh this one's more of a true just black blue reanimator style deck and is a lot of fun. Definitely enjoyed it. And actually um the scry and the target opponent losing life, it does kind of start to add up towards the game goes on as you get these big threats out there. You know, three or four of these zombies and uh, three or four turn in addition to these zombies kind of putting a taxing effect on the battlefields is usually enough to kind of help close it out. So a lot of fun. Definitely enjoyed the deck. So that's the Scare God. That's what we're doing, trying to do with the deck. Let's just, I'm going to highlight some of the reanimator spells that we're running in here. Uh, running the classic reanimate, put target creature card from a graveyard under the battlefield under your control. Uh, you lose life equals converted mana cost. Pretty simple, just a cheap way to get a creature on the battlefield. Uh, same thing with Animate Dead. It's going to get minus one, minus zero, but you get the idea. It's an enchantment. Now, outside of the actual spells that allow us to reanimate, we're running a lot of spells like Careful Study. So, one blue, uh, one blue mana, draw two cards, then discard two cards. It's a good way for us to dig for our third, fourth, fifth land, and also it gets, puts us in a spot where we can dump one of our reanimator targets into the graveyard. That way we can bring, that, bring it back out with the Scare of God, uh, or use one of our other reanima reanimator spells to get it rocking and rolling. Same idea here, we have Ideas Unbound, draw three, discard three at the, next, um, at the beginning of your next end step. Uh, and then Hedron Crap. Got to highlight Hedron Crab. Love Hedron Crab, man. If you have Hedron Crab in your opening hand and you get it down, usually you're going to win the game, man. You're just going to get your graveyard going so quick with so many triggers. We're running a lot of fetch lands in here. So uh, get Hedron Crab down, make your land drop, uh, direct that target. Um, you can even target your opponent. Let's say you, one of your opponents is playing a really creature-heavy deck. Uh, you can start targeting those um, Hedron Crabs triggers over to your opponent and start making them mill, and so they'll mill the graveyard for the Scarab God. So really good card, really good utility card. We're also running Traumatized. Target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded out into the graveyard. This is just basically instantly like, hey, here's a graveyard. What do you need to do with it? I love casting it. Uh, we're also running Mesmic Orb. Uh, whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller puts the top card of his or her library into their graveyard. Uh, so let's say we have this on the battlefield. We tap five lands. Our five lands untapped during the next untap step, and there's going to be five different cards that get milled into the graveyard. The cool thing about this is it counts for everybody. So your opponent's going to start milling, which is going to give you more targets for the Scare of God. Um, we're also running Tunnel Vision. Really good for any sort of reanimator style graveyard deck that you're running. Uh, choose a card name. Target player reveals the cards from the top of their library until that card is revealed. If it is, that player puts the rest of the cards into the graveyard and then puts that card into their hand. So with Tunnel Vision, it's six mana, it's a tutor, and it's also a really big mill spell. You know, you're going to have to get lucky, but let's say that we name Living Death. We have a really nice graveyard going. Uh, we'll cast Tunnel Vision. Most of the time, you know, Knock on wood to the uh, the graveyard lords of magic, but uh, most of the time you're getting up with a nice chunk of cards in the graveyard, usually around 20. I mean, it just honestly depends. Most of the time I've done it, um, I've always had at least about 20 go in there. But look, once again, it's luck of the draw, so you're always going to hope it's down towards the bottom. Uh, but it's a good way to go for a target and get some cards in the graveyard. We're also running Buried Alive. Uh, three mana, search your library for up to three creature cards, put them into the graveyard, then shuffle your library. So this is a good way for us to, let's say we're playing against a deck that we need some spot removal. Uh, we can grab some of our spot re removal uh, reanimator targets, get those in the graveyard. Or we're playing against a control style deck and maybe we want to get Void Winnower so they can't cast even spells. Maybe they're commander or any sort of a counter spell 
It just really makes the de uh, the uh, deck wide open as far as what kind of graveyard package you're going to go for. So, that is the reanimator spells, the reanimator support cards. Uh, let's go on to the reanimator targets. A lot of fun, man. And that's the cool thing about the Scarab God. You can pretty much just put whatever you want in there. If you wanted to go Eldrazi, instant speed reanimation, you could go for it. It'd be a little hard, but you can definitely get it done. Uh, running Platinum Angel, uh, you can't lose the game. And I'm just, we're, there's probably about 25 targets, so I'm just going to kind of brisk through these. Uh, that way you can just see the card art. If you want to pause the video and read, go for it. Uh, we got Platinum Angel. Um, we can't lose the game, opponents can't win the game. Mirror Battlesphere, it's a 4-7. We're going to get four bodies when it enters the battlefield. And then it's going to be a 4-4 zombie, but we can still tap it to get those mirror tokens. Lord of the Void, uh, when it deals combat damage, we're going to look at the top seven cards of our opponent's library, put a creature card from it onto the battlefield under our control. It's always fun. Man, this is one of my favorite EMR targets. I love it. Always fun going for that. Whispering One, just a little bit of um, kind of board control, make our opponent start sacrificing some creatures. And if they die, they sacrifice, we can reanimate them with the Crypt God, so, I mean, with the uh, Scarab God, so that's always fun. Uh, Overseer of the Damned, a uh, sp little bit of spot removal, and then if any sort of their, let's say we get Massacre Worm, and this is on the battlefield, uh, then we'll get some nice little zombies for our trouble. We'll draw to can, uh, contribute to the um, upkeep trigger of the Scarab God, which is a nice overload. I mean, Overlord. If we get some nice black devotion, get those harpies on the battlefield. Um, Harold, he might be on the, the chopping block. Eh, he was okay. I feel like a lot of times if I was going to get him out there... Um, there's better stuff we could be doing with our time. So he's probably going to be one of the first reanimator targets. But basically, we're going to gain control of land, gets plus one. There's certain scenarios where if this is like your third to fourth reanimation target. You know, it's okay. But um, it didn't exactly like, like oh, yeah, get the thumbs up. So he may be first on the chopping, blo uh, chopping block as far as future uh, reanimator targets for the deck. Uh, got a little bit of spot removal, Frexian and Jester. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target creature, then gets plus X, plus Y, which would also be a nice little bonus to its 4-4 body when it comes in because it's a zombie. New Scraft Mock. Awesome card. It's going to enter the battle with 5 plus 1 counters on it. So, it's a 0-0 zero, zero body, but it's going to come in as a 4-4 four, four because of the Scarab God. Then it's going to get the 5 plus 1 counters on it, so it's a 9-9. Nine, nine. And then once you get rid of, like if we cast spells or our opponents cast spells, we're going to get a 2-2 two, two zombie on the battlefield, which contributes towards the Scarab God trigger. And then once we get rid of counters, it doesn't die. It just simply stays a 4-4. Four, four. So it's just basically kind of like a uh, storm version of just zombies falling off the mob. So pretty cool. And it sticks around. Uh, Grave Titan, everybody knows about uh, Uncle Zombie over there. Noxious Gear Hulk is just simply a little bit of spot removal. Uh, Demon of Dark Schemes, we have our board wipe in that one. And plus it has a very uh, small reanimator package on it too with the energy and the three mana. Massacre Worm, once again, we can use it to kind of close it out if our opponent has some tokens out there. Or just get into spots where we need a little bit of board control. Uh, Sire of Stagnation, um, def this is one of our, more of our um, reanimator targets. It's going to give us a little bit of card advantage. Lane enters the battlefield, that player exiles the top of cards of the library, and we're going to draw two cards. So even if we start drawing a bunch of cards, we can just simply discard them for more um, reanimator targets for the Scare of God. We need to make him happy. He likes zombies. Um, <laughs> we're also running Razaketh. Yeah, I don't know. Razaketh is okay. Um, you know, we're paying four mana to reanimate t uh, creatures. Uh, we may end up swapping him out for somebody else, but um, you know, it's nice to be able to pay two life to sack a creature and uh, put a card in your hand. You know, let's say we get a bunch of zombies out there, get down Razaketh, start sacking those zombies. So, you know, it, it's it's worth running in there, but the couple times I had it, I, just the board state didn't really support it that much, but I wouldn't have forced it. Razakat's a pretty cool dude. Uh, Mind Leech Mass is probably my second favorite reanimator target. And that's Trample. Whatever deals combat damage to player, we get to look at their hand. We may cast a non-land card without paying it. So, we have these value reanimator targets that we can simply just swing in with as a 4-4 body. If they don't have enough blockers, then we're going to generate some nice little value uh, by being able to cast stuff out of their hand. Uh, Void Winner, a little bit of kind of a control style reanimator. Um, our opponents can't even do anything. Can't cast even spells. Um, yeah, and then their opponents can't block creatures with uh, even converted mana cost. So, pretty good for us. We're also running It That Betrays. Just, I love it, man. Whenever opponent sacks a creature, not a non token permanent, put it on the battlefield under your control. So, anyway, it's just nice to have at least one creature card with Annihilator in there. And I've always enjoyed this card. It's pretty cool. And then we also have the Core Augur. Uh, Black Blue Reanimator would not be completed without this one. Uh, draw seven cards at your next end step, and then uh, each opponent's hand is reduced by seven. So you get into spots where you can basically just kind of lock them, not lock them out of the game, but put them on some really bad top deck. So that is the reanimator targets in a nutshell. On to the next one, we have our utility cards for the deck. Uh, we're running Training Grounds. This is going to reduce the activated ability of the Scarab God, so we can simply reanimate creatures for uh, two uh, black and a blue, put on the battlefield. Uh, we're also running Empty the Pits. Let's say that we can't get the Scarab God down, and you know, the opponent has a bunch of spot removal. Somehow we just can't get him on the battlefield. But we can keep milling. So let's say that the, well, 
let's just say the Scarab God's on the battlefield. We've got 50 cards in. We, let's say we've got 40 cards in the graveyard. We just end of turn go for an empty the pits. That's going to be 20 zombies on the battlefield. That might be enough to close the game out for you. So empty the pits is really good in combination with the beginning and the upkeep. They're going to lose X life or X is the number of zombies you control. And since it has that delve mana, we're already milling our library a lot. Um, it's basically pretty much whatever version of the Scarab God you're going. Um, you know, unless it's not. It's just straightforward control or something like that. But even then, um, using empty the pence, uh, emptying the pence would be a really good way for you to uh, help you kind of close the game out with that activated ability during your upkeep. We're also running Living Death. This is a good way for us to kind of get into a board wipe and then get a bunch of uh, reanimator targets on the graveyard. Uh, Liliana's Death Mastery, great reanimator, Planeswalker, um, Corpse Connoisseur, nice little way for us to kind of target uh, certain cards we want into the graveyard. And uh, now with Frexian Delver, this is kind of one of our utility reanimator targets. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield, you lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So, for simply four mana, we can bring the Delver back out and then bring a secondary creature out there. Let's say we're okay on life total and we just want an extra 4-4 body on the battlefield, uh, we can target this one and then target another creature to kind of bring it out. We're also running Possessed Scab. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, return target instant sorcerer or creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and then if it die, exile it. But mainly, it's just a good way. It's kind of an eternal witness. that allows us to grab a... Uh, most of the time, if we're going to be grabbing something, it's going to be an instant or sorcery. Uh, sometimes we might need a certain creature. Most of this, we're not really running that many uh, low converted mana cost creatures in here. So uh, most of the time, it's going to be an instant or sorcery, like reanimate or something like that, or buried alive, but uh, still a really good utility card to have in the deck. And we're also running Recurring Nightmare, sack a creature, return uh, target creature card from the graveyard to your battlefield, and then once you kind of get that chain going, you can start uh, sacking those creatures to get them back into the graveyard, so the Scarab God, because once you activate the Scarab God, it's going to get exiled, so you're going to lose it from your graveyard, so... If you can kind of get the Recurring Nightmare rocking and rolling, you can sack the creatures and they'll still be available for the uh, Scare of God activation. Uh, we covered that. Oh, Illusioner's Bracers. Forgot to cover this. Nice little utility card. Uh, whenever the ability... Basically, it's just going to double our activations for the Scare of God. Um... I didn't record it, but one of the like literally the first game I played with the Scarab God, I got down the bracers and then I had training grounds down. So for like black blue, I was reanimating two creatures per turn. I mean per activation, and it was just like oh, Commander Heaven felt so good. So hopefully I can get that uh, going for you in the future. But that's gonna be the deck tech in a nutshell. I've got three gameplay videos for you, and I do have the uh, the joys of editing with Jolt, where I uh, edit the card image and I show you how I made the thumbnail for the deck tech. So if you want to see that check it out. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.